voice is going to be available. Um, good afternoon. Um, I hope everyone is kind of still awake after lunch, but I'm very positive that we have a very interesting afternoon session. We heard a lot about the promise of, of immunotherapy, and, um, but we also know people do develop side effects and toxicities, and it's very important to manage them, so we dedicated one session specifically to the question of side effects and their management. I'm very happy to announce the first speaker, which is um, Alessandra Corione, senior clinician here in our medical oncology, and in particular responsible for lung cancer treatment. Alessandra, and you will talk about the issue of steroids. Mm. Now it's green, perfect. So, and I will discuss with you about a challenge that we often face in the clinic, and this is about the use of corticosteroids while we are treating patients with immune checkpoint blockade. This is my disclosure slide. Why is such a topic so important and why such a challenge? And this is certainly due to the fact that uh, steroids have a magnitude of, uh, to the magnitude of effects that the steroids have in the immune system. And I'm gonna guide you through the topic by discussing how steroids are used in clinical trials with immune checkpoint inhibitors, about the mechanism, how steroids can affect the outcome, but also how steroids can act uh, to the, with the immune system, and what are the impact in preclinical and clinical uh, data, and as well as the impact of using steroids during uh, side effects, uh, immune response related. So the first uh, thing I would like to point out is that uh, despite uh, there is an increased uh, and a very fast pace increase uh, of studies uh, using a checkpoint inhibition, either PDL1, PD1, or CTLA4 antibodies, or a combination of those during the years. Still, in this review of about 1,000 studies, uh, about 30% of these studies allow the use of corticosteroids. I was impressed as well. And this is especially in the studies that have been developed in the recent years. So we have to keep this point in mind. And why is that so important? So what is the effect that steroids uh, can act on? What are the effects of steroids on the immune system? Can be explained but by the mechanism of action of steroids in cells. So what you can see here is that steroids can act through non-genomic effects by directly interacting with multi-protein, uh, complex of multi-proteins, or by direct genomic effects, and this by interacting directly with transcription, with genes, or with transcription factors, or with composite way, which means together transcription factor and sequences of DNA. So this is a direct activity, a direct effect of steroids on transcription factors, and I would like to point out that this can be either inhibiting or enhancing their activity, and what you can see on, the, on your right side is uh, some of the transcription factors that can be affected by steroids, either inhibited or enhanced in their activity. So this is pretty important, uh, especially when we think at the immune system in terms of, for example, the inflammatory reaction. And when we think about an inflammatory reaction, we think about the acute to the alarm phase, the first phase, the mobilization phase of the immune system and the resolution phase of the inflammation. At all these three steps, steroids can play an important role by blocking, for example, the production of prostaglandins, by, for example, blocking the expression of E-selectin and, and integrins, and by these, blocking the mobilization of immune cells at the inflammatory site, and by stimulating uh, and uh, supporting the resolution phase. So this is very important from one side if we think about the inflammatory response, but what is the effect on the adaptive immune system? And this is just an example because there is a multitude of literature about the effect on lymphocytes, for example. But if we think about antigens that need to be presented 
to the immune system in order to elicit an immune response, steroids play a role by blocking co-stimulatory signals on dendritic cells, lowering the expression of MHC, class 2, for example, lowering the expression of several cytokines. As well at the level of the T cells, as we said before, there is a multitude of literature that explain how steroids can lead to cell death of T cells, but as well by lowering the expression of several cytokines. Knowing that, it's also important to say that still some of the functions of steroids at the immune system level, and especially in the adaptive response, is still unclear. And here is an example of how T cells can be polarized, the TH cells can be polarized in their activity by steroids. An example in red, what it can be inhibited, Th1 and Th17, and same time with enhanced activity directing the polarization to Th2 and Trx. So if we want to summarize, uh, and this is uh, just through the understanding of all the literature that we have mentioned and the effort in the research to understand the effect of steroids, we can summarize saying that steroids have multiple effects on the immune system, which can be in the innate immunity by pro-inflammatory cytokines and chemokine reduction, and by hampering adaptive immunity through reduction of antigen presentation, reduction of co-stimulation of the expression of T-cell receptor and lymphocyte survival. But still, there is some positive effect of the steroids, and this has been explained in terms of uh, expressed uh, expression and increase of cytokine receptors or a complement. And it has been described this to occur in the first phase when corticosteroids are given for a short time and at a low dose. So there are still several open questions on how should we give in the best way corticosteroids to patients when we look for an immune response. How does it look in the tumor of patients? And I would like just to show you one uh, very interesting work by Dr. Selina from the Experimental Immunology in Zurich in patients with non-small cell lung cancer. And what you can see here, these are sections of lung cancer. You see with a T, here is the tumor. And all these different uh, structures that you see here are so-called tertiary lymphoid structure. Are these important? Yes, these are part of the immune system and can support an immune response against the tumor. So what she could see is that in this population of patients, uh, in their tumor, the presence of tertiary lymphoid structure was significantly reduced if the patient were undergoing systemic or local treatment with corticosteroids. And does this translate into something in patients in outcome? And the answer is yes. In terms of progression-free survival, disease-free survival, and overall survival, having a high presence of tertiary lymphoid structure had uh, an impact, a positive impact uh, in this patient, meaning supporting immune response. So we brought, we went back to the lab and we asked the question, now if we give corticosteroids uh, while giving immunotherapy, what is it happening? And using a preclinical model, a preclinical mouse model can help in these kind of questions because you can select the drug, you can select the time points, you can select the dose. So the first question we had in the lab, it was on this mesothelioma mouse model, is that immune checkpoint blockade can synergize with any chemotherapy, and we can find that gemcitabine, which is a cytostatic and demethylating agent, can synergize with immune checkpoint inhibition. You can see here, this is the group of mice who received the combination. But when we gave uh, into the, to this combination as well corticosteroids, so-called dexamethasone, this impact was completely, the synergy was completely hampered, and you can see it here. Why is that happening? Uh, we are looking at this now in detail, but what we could see in the tumor of those mice, these are the untreated one, these are the one treated with chemotherapy, gemcitabine, the combination with synergy, and this is when giving dexamethasone, is that the presence of T cells at the tumor side was uh, very strongly diminished. So, 
Is it true only for mesothelioma or is it true for any tumor type? And uh, it's of particular interest, uh, this uh, study that has been performed uh, by Russell and others, um, showing that steroids might have different effects if we have a tumor outside or inside of the central nervous system. And this can be of particular interest as well for developing of other studies. This is a colon cancer model, and what you can see here is while giving the mice a dexamethasone, the tumor volume is uh, increasing over time, and when you give anti-PD-1, there is a clear response. But this response is hampered if we're going to give dexamethasone just once, twice, or over the time. So colon cancer resembles what we have seen in mesothelioma. However, if we take a glioblastoma model, where uh, the mice will receive either anti-PD-1 with dexamethasone once, twice, or over the time, this effect is not seen. And this opens several questions for the valid development of studies, because despite you can see in this system that in the periphery, dexamethasone can lead to lymphocytopenia and to, um, to deactivation, of course, of, as well of these lymphocytes, this is not seen in terms of impact on outcome. So what is the outcome then in patients? Let's go into the clinical question. And I'm going to show you three studies. The first one was performed uh, by taking together data from Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York and Gustave Roussy from Paris. And these are patients with stage four non-small cell lung cancer who received uh, during uh, or before start of immune checkpoint blockade prednisone less than 10 or plus prednisone more than 10 milligrams. What you can see is clearly that the population receiving 10 milligram prednisone is much less than the one who are receiving less. But what we can also see is the impact of giving such steroids in this population of patients. And what is of interest is that in both cohorts, New York and Paris, is that overall survival was significantly different and reduced in patients who received more than 10 milligram prednisone in the first 28 days from start of immunotherapy with checkpoint blockade. Of interest as well in the multivariate analysis is that not only steroids play a role, but also the performance status, which brings us back, why are we giving these steroids to these patients? Steroids are often given for palliation of symptoms, are given to patients who have a chronic obstructive pneumonic disease. So, Therefore, as well, patients who have lower performance status as well had an impact in this overall survival curve. The second study I'm going to show you is a, a one center. This is the Institute of Tumori in Milan in Italy. And again, it could be shown that giving patients, and you can see here this is the exposed cohort of patients, meaning that they received prednisone more than 10 milligram for at least uh, one day in the first 20 day, eight days from start of checkpoint blockade, again, this patient had a worse outcome. And again, performance status in the multivariate analysis plays a role. And I would like to conclude this in uh, non-small cell lung cancer patients with this uh, third study, with, uh, which was uh, collecting about 200 patients. And you can see that here, a broad population of patients receive steroids in the first 30 days, and again, this is confirmed. These are to be taken with care, these results, because these are retrospective data, but from broad cohort of patients. The question is, why did we give steroids, or why did they give steroids in this group of patients? One point is brain metastasis, it had been mentioned. COPD could be, so lung disease. Constitution symptoms of her palliations but it could be that in the first 30 days, the patients develop so-called immune-related adverse events. Immune-related adverse events very well resemble autoimmune diseases and can occur at different sites and in different organs, and the treatment of those uh, uh, imply the use of steroids, or infliximab, MMF, and cyclosporine. So steroids are often used, if you look at the guidelines, how to treat uh, such immune-related adverse events, we will often find uh, uh, as a first the corticosteroids when they are severe. 
But what is the impact of using steroids in case of immune-related adverse events? And these are data from a cohort of patients stage for melanoma, where patients were receiving steroids not before, so previous to immune checkpoint inhibition, but just to treat immune-related adverse events. No impact. So we can speculate that in these patients, the immune response against the cancer already occurred, and despite the use of corticosteroids, this was still leading to a good outcome in these patients. We should not forget, and I would like to share with you the case of a patient treated at our unit, that steroids can have long-term effects. This is the CT scan of a patient who has lung cancer and he's receiving anti-PD-1. So these are the lungs, this is the heart, and what you can see here is the infiltrate. This is a called pneumonia, which was evaluated and analyzed and uh, diagnosed to be related to an immune response uh, um, pneumonitis. So the patient received prednisone for a while, was doing better, but while we were tapering the dose of prednisone, his clinical conditions uh, uh, dramatically changed, and the patient was admitted into the intensive care unit, uh, needing high-flow oxygen, so we started combination treatment as well, uh, cyclophosphamide, infliximab, and intravenous immunoglobulin, with complete resolution of the symptoms. But we have not to forget not only the cancer, but also that these patients will become immunocompromised due to this long treatment uh, with steroids and other drugs. And in fact, the patient eventually developed a so-called aspergillus pneumonia, what you can see in, this, in the lungs, as well as an herpes zoster. So this patient become and has to be followed like patients who are undergoing immune suppression. And just uh, a word that Cushing is uh, simply an acronym of all the possible side effects that can occur by the use of steroids. So we have to keep this in mind because we are treating patients who are responding, who might have these kind of side effects, but can develop one of the long-term side effects of steroids. So as a perspective, as a wish, it would be if we could finally analyze what's occurring and which are the cytokines and chemokines involved in this, in this uh, such immune response related adverse events. And if we could target specifically the responsible cytokines, probably we might avoid these broad side effects that with steroids can occur. And such individualized treatment is only possible thanks to the collaboration of many people who are actively involved and here I would like to mention that under the umbrella of the Comprehensive Cancer Center in Zurich there has been developed a group of experts in immune oncology from the different disciplines you will hear afterwards Dr. Roth as well and we try to tailor not only now the treatment of the patient but as well as the treatment of their side effects. And I would like to thank them to be very actively and present at the tumor board for heavy discussions. Despite thanking them, I would like to thank you all for your kind attention and uh, I'm ready for questions. Thank you very much, Alessandra, for this excellent overview. Are there questions? Yes. So, so we, we reviewed a number of trials this morning in which uh, the addition of an anti-PD-1 drug to cytotoxic chemotherapy was beneficial. And of course, in those platinum-containing regimens, we routinely give high-dose dexamethasone as a prophylactic antiemetic. Should we stop doing that? Well, what I was mentioning is that there is a broad literature about how long and how much do you give corticosteroids? So we also know that giving not that high dose, but in, as well as short term of corticosteroids might help and might support an initial immune response. So if we are talking about the dosage and the time, I would say low dose and short time. We know unfortunately that for cisplatin, for example, due to the side effects, it is impossible to avoid that. So this, instead of avoiding steroids, we might try to avoid uh, chemotherapy that are probably so toxic, if possible and whenever possible. And I think that uh, Michel Weller was also mentioning there are other drugs that can be used uh, for other intent instead of steroids, 
And this we can do it and apply it as well with antiemetics, for example, with, uh, with other drugs. Would be. We designed, uh, and uh, I can mention it because this will start very soon, a study for, based on our preclinical data where the combination with chemotherapy and immune checkpoint inhibition and no corticosteroids will be allowed for both mesothelium and lung cancer in second line. Alessandra, here. Hi. Um, nice, really nice talk about uh, the, the glucor, uh, corticoid uh, uh, treatment. Um, what I still have a problem with is why these patients were receiving uh, the, 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 the steroids, right? So are we looking at an effect of the steroids directly, or is it just because it's a poor performance patient population that because of that they have poor, a poor outcome? Because we don't see these effects uh, once we are treating um, the immune-related adverse events. There's hardly any uh, effect on outcome of, of steroids. We have no data that if you have to escalate to other treatments, like infliximab or something else, that those patients that need that appear to do worse compared to the ones that only get steroids. So there's really a discrepancy between being on steroids when you start immunotherapy exactly. and receiving steroids for the, induction, for the treatment of immune-related adverse events, something we do not really understand unless it's the naive cells that are highly sensitive to, uh, uh, to, to, to uh, glucocorticosteroids, uh, whereas the, uh, the, uh, the, the effector cells that you know, may be doing the job in the tumor are not at all. Do we have any evidence for that? No, because the evidence we have for the patients and the outcome of patients undergoing steroids for immune-related adverse events, at least the data we have published, are for melanoma. So we know that for the lung cancer is probably a different also population of patients with, who have COPD and so on. But what is interesting still in the data from Memoria Sloncadere and Gustav Rossi is the PFS. And this we have seen it in the clinic. So patients who are undergoing steroids for other reason, which can be COPD or an autoimmune disease, this patient might as well respond, but not for a long time. So the explanation I can give you at the moment is based on what we know, and it would be very interesting to look now, now at this data in this patient in terms of overall survival, the one who had the immune response related adverse events in the lung cancer group. So this is much different. It's completely different population of patients. Still, the performance status is, in the multivariate analysis, significant. But still, the corticosteroids are also significant in this multivariate analysis. So, and especially the PFS, I didn't show the PFS for a matter of time, but the PFS is confirmed as well to be much shorter in the patients who are receiving steroids. So certainly we have a population who has comorbidities. There is a very interesting paper from Banna et al. published at the beginning of this year, who was uh, um, proposing which patients should not undergo, for example, immunotherapy based on performance status, uh, immunocorticosteroids um, at the same time, and so on. This, and as well uh, with it, uh, the um, laboratory values. Because this, we didn't uh, discuss it, but it was mentioned this morning by Burkhard Becher that what we see in the blood, it could be as well uh, uh, something that we miss here, and changes in the blood values could help us as well to see which patients who are undergoing steroids have, for example, high neutrophils, and by having high neutrophils, they do not respond as well. We're having a very good discussion, but I would like to ask for a quick question, quick answer. Um, I, I just very briefly wanted to mention that, that there was a very recent JCO publication by Lichuti or something like that, mm. the, and they showed in NSCLC that the detriment was seen only in patients that received steroid for tumor-related issues. Um, not for those that uh, received it for autoimmune disease or other things. Okay, if there's no more f further questions, thanks a lot for.